Every time you notice a circular part that has some kind of pattern, chances are that using the revolve feature will work to create it in SOLIDWORKS. By building this part shown on screen, we'll use a couple of the concepts we've covered in previous videos, so make sure to check out those videos in the description below, but for the most part, we'll keep it simple. We'll learn a lot more about section and auxiliary views in a later video, link below. But for now, all you need to understand is that a section view like this on the right is showing us an orthogonal view, meaning one of the perpendicular views, like the side view in this case, of a section or portion of the part. This means that the part has been cut through the line that reads AA in this case, and what the section view shows us is what we would see from the side where the cut has been performed. Again, we'll cover these views in more detail later, but to give you a better graphical explanation of this concept, I will actually use the section view option in SOLIDWORKS to show you that we can cut the final part at different locations. For example, we can cut the part close to the front and see what the remaining geometry would look like, or we can cut it somewhere close to 3 fourths of the way from the back to the front, or we can just cut it right in the middle, which is actually what we have for our drawing section view. Notice that the surfaces in blue are those that are shown in our section view with the crosshatch pattern. An easy way to understand this is to think of these surfaces as those that were in contact with the knife that we used to cut the part through that plane. The reason there is a gap here is because there's a hole at that location, so the knife didn't touch the part between those lines. Holes aside, notice that the cross section would look the same regardless of at what angle we're trying to look our section view. We can do 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and they all look the same. Again, holes aside. We can even have one identical section view, even with the holes, if our cross section is created at a 45 degree angle. This all suggests that we can create a cross section and revolve it around an axis to generate the 3D part, something similar to what you used to do in calc with volumes of solids of revolutions. But don't worry, we won't be doing any of that math here. The reason I bring that up is because just like in calc, we don't need the entire cross section. Sure, we can have the entire cross section and revolve it over 180 degrees, or we can have half the section and revolve it 360 degrees. So we'll go with that second option. That way we don't need to use the mirror feature. Link to the mirror option video below. Our overall plan for building this part will therefore be to sketch the top part of our section view, revolve it around the red axis 360 degrees, and after we have the main geometry, we'll add the holes. Of course, not one by one, but by using the second feature we'll cover today, called either sketch patterns at a sketch level, or just pattern at the feature level. Alright, so we'll use the front plane to create a sketch, starting with a construction line down the middle. We can look at the section view, focusing on the top portion, and we can draw a rough sketch of how it looks. Again, since the holes will be added at the end, we don't need to worry about those yet, and we draw the whole thing without those lines. Notice that I was careful to not set any relations when creating the lines, meaning there were no relations being on screen when clicking with the mouse. By using Smart Dimension, we then assign the specified numbers we see on our drawing. We begin with the vertical distances, 12, 16, 42, 48, 64, 68, and even 24, and we make sure that the aligned lines are in fact aligned by using the collinear option under the Add Relation menu, link below to that Add Relation main video. To do the horizontal distances, we can first make the leftmost segment be coincident with our origin, and then work on all of those dimensions using the leftmost segment as the reference, just like it is shown in the section view. And once again, we make these two segments be collinear with an add relation option. Now everything is fully defined. To revolve this sketch about the horizontal centerline, we'll go into features and select revolve base. If we don't have the sketch selected yet, SOLIDWORKS will ask us to select the sketch we want to revolve, and as soon as we click on it, SOLIDWORKS will most likely understand that the construction line is the axis of revolution. If SOLIDWORKS doesn't do this automatically, we would also be asked to provide the axis of revolution manually. All we have to do in that scenario is to click on the segment that provides the axis information. Another assumption SOLIDWORKS makes is that we want to revolve blindly 360 degrees. 
and this is what we want here, but if for whatever reason we only want another angle value, this is where we would set it. Okay, so now we click on the green check mark and we have our main feature. To drill the holes, we create a sketch on the surface that the holes will go. We draw a circle, we set its 5mm diameter, we add a vertical restriction between its center and the center of our part with add relation, and we locate its center 56 millimeters away from the center. Now we have two options. The first one is to create the pattern at a sketch level, the second one is to create it at a feature level. To do the first option, the pattern at the sketch level, we select the circle, and under the drop down options of linear sketch patterns, we select the circular sketch pattern option. The options for this command are pretty straightforward. For example, the angle that our pattern is going to cover, the number of entities that we want in our pattern, if they will be equally spaced, or even if we want to skip an instance. For example, the third circle here. Specifically for our part, we do want all of them equally spaced, and we need a total of 8 holes. Once we're done, we click OK, and use that sketch to create an extruded cut that goes through all, and we click OK again. And done! The alternative to this, which is the second option I just mentioned, is to go back to our sketch of the one circle and use that to create an extruded cut that goes through all. After we have the one hole, an entire hole, not just one circle, under features, we go to the drop-down menu of linear pattern and select circular pattern. Again, the options are gonna be pretty similar. The features and faces we want to pattern are the hole, around the central axis, which SOLIDWORKS will understand if we select the central cylinder, we want equally spaced instances, and we need 8 of them. We click OK, and we can assign it a material, let's say high density polyethylene, and we can even edit its appearance so that it looks like a textured black polymer. And done! Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out the links to the rest of the SOLIDWORKS lecture videos, as well as the other courses like Mechanics of Materials or Statics down in the description below. See ya!